Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Jennifer, the Whistle Stop Stitcher. This is Boss Tube episode 31. And I am coming to you a week after StitchCon and it was amazing. <laughs> and so I am going to talk about that in much greater detail here in a few minutes. Um, but I just wanna say thank you to everyone who is stopping by and watching. Um, if you're new, thanks for finding me. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you again so much for watching. It was absolutely awesome to meet people at StitchCon last week that uh, watched my videos. It was kind of strange, but absolutely awesome. And so I really, really appreciate everybody who watches my videos. It's, it's great. Um, it's fun to share, you know, our love of this craft um, with people far and wide. So it's super fun. But I have a whole list of things to talk about and I think this will probably be a long video. I have a lot of things to show. Um, and so I might as well just jump right into it. Um, hopefully I won't be, inter I don't think I'll be interrupted. My family's still in California. They're there for two more weeks. Um, and so there's no one here to come barging in, but my sister has been coming over and hanging out with me. Um, and we've been doing a lot of sewing and stuff, so she might call or text me at some point because she wants to come over, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, so StitchCon, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. But okay, one more thing though, before I get onto the Stitch stuff, StitchCon stuff. Um, it, two videos ago, I had a giveaway for the Little House Needleworks um, Needlework Shop chart, and in my last video, I picked the winner and that is Lynette Peters and I still have not heard from you Lynette so please get in touch with me um, please send me an email whistlestopstitcher at gmail.com um, with your information your address so I can get that out in the mail to you um, if I don't hear back from you soon then I'll have to pick another winner and I hate to do that so please get in touch Lynette um, so that I can get you your chart okay enough about that on to stitch con so like I said it was amazing um, I left my house here in Knoxville Thursday morning so last Thursday morning I guess that would have been the 27th of June um, I left about 8 o'clock in the morning it's about a four hour four hour and 15 minute drive up to Cincinnati to uh, where stitch con was and so I left at about 8 8 30 had to you know stop and get myself some breakfast and stuff and then I headed up there it was a very nice drive I had no issues whatsoever I was super excited <laughs> so it seemed to go by pretty quickly um, and so I arrived around maybe 12 30 or so um, and I was staying at the live-in which is the hotel next door to the convention center and to the Hyatt which is attached to the convention center um, and so I was able to go ahead and get checked in a little bit early. And so I, you know, brought all my stuff in, got all my things ready to go. And then I headed over to the convention center. It was probably about one o'clock by the time I arrived. Um, and so it had started at noon and I've seen quite a few videos of people, you know, with the line of folks waiting to get in. Um, but by the time I got there at one, there was no line. I just walked right up to the check-in desk and I saw Steph, um, Stephanie and Pam. Um, and so they got me checked in and gave me my bag and all my goodies. Uh, and then I headed into the room to find a place to sit. Um, and so I'll show you first the bag that they gave us when we checked in. Here it is. It's a very nice bag. I really like this. I'm gonna use it to keep my stitching in. Um, and so we got our, our name tags and so here's mine uh, and we had little lanyards to wear there's my taco sticker from Kyle I'll talk about that a little bit later um, and a needle minder that I got actually I'll show you from Melissa cupcake stitcher isn't that pretty I had it at the end of the weekend they asked us to return our lanyards and so I had it attached with a needle minder to my shirt so people would still know who I was <laughs> Um, and so when we checked in, they gave us our goodies. One of the things we got was our passport and it had a whole bunch of 
questions about various floss tubers in here. And so you could go around and figure out who they were. And then they gave those of us who are floss tubers these little stickers so that we could peel them off and stick them in when people came by and figured out which one of these was us. Um, so that was fun. And so lots of people came by and introduced themselves to me and I gave them a sticker. Um, also included was this absolutely adorable like little Ohio ornament. It is so cute. From Ulalu. Olalu, I guess. Um, handmade goods. And this is adorable. And so I look forward to putting that on my tree this year. Then there was also, and you guys have probably seen some of these things in other people's videos, but I'm going to share it, share it anyway. This amazing StitchCon notebook. This is really nice, like a nice journal. And so I will use it to keep track of stitchy stuff, I'm guessing. So awesome. And then there were some pet, you know, they had our itinerary in there and then they, we, they got, gave us a bunch of patterns, which was amazing. I'm not gonna go through them all. You've seen them, I'm sure. But there's a whole bunch of them in here. Um, so a whole, really cute ones too. So hopefully I can stitch up some of those. A lot of them are a little small, so should be hopefully quick and easy. So that was in there. And oops, I got some stuff in here that I want to show later. So let me pull that out. And then there was a little snack. Oops. And I got some cards and things from people which are floating around in here. <laughs> Just make sure that <coughs> nothing else. Okay. All right, so that was that. So once I got in the room, I was looking for a place to sit. And even though it was only like one o'clock, the place was already packed. I mean, people were there on time and ready to go. <laughs> so um, it was a little intimidating to walk into the room by myself, not really knowing anybody and then go, oh gosh, where am I gonna sit and, you know, uh, find a place to park myself and so but right as I walked into the door I ran into Lynette from homesteading on the home front and she said hi and said that was wonderful um, and so then I just started wandering through the tables just to see if I could find a place to sit and as I was walking um, I see Delisha from Kentucky Sass is in the back kind of waving at me and so <laughs> I walked over and to say hi and chatted with her and a couple of other people and I'll get to the other folks in a minute. Um, but there was a mostly empty table sitting right next to them with two more of their Cincinnati friends there. And so they were like, here, sit next to us. So, so I sat down at that table kind of towards the back and found a spot. And, um, and then that was where I sat for the rest of the weekend. Um, and then our table slowly filled up uh, as the day went by. And so I had an awesome table filled with super nice ladies. Um, there was Tony and Beth who are sisters um, that are from, I think Tony in, lives in Kentucky and I think Beth lived in, um, in Ohio. Um, but Tony is one of the regular crew I think that goes up to keepsakes. Um, and so they were super sweet and nice. Um, and then there were two more sisters that sat at our table, um, Rose and Linda, and they were fantastic. They were so nice. And so I actually sat in between the two of them for the rest of the weekend and we all chatted and got to know each other and it was it was wonderful. They were like the sweetest ladies. And Linda, if you're watching, I have to tell you that she brought some s'mores Oreos and then at the end of the weekend, she gave them to me to let me take them home. Those were the most delicious Oreos I've ever eaten in my life. And I've already eaten the rest of the box this weekend. And then I went and bought myself some more. So thank you for the s'mores Oreos because they were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Linda and Rose were sitting next to me and it was it was wonderful um, and then also at the table was Jill and she was super sweet and fantastic and so we all chatted with her as well and then Claire was on the other side of the table and I didn't get to talk to her as much um, just a little bit but everybody at the table was super nice and um, we all just had the best time so that was absolutely wonderful um, 
so we were stitching away and just having a great time um, and I'm just trying to think of sort of the best way to go through everything that went on um, I did meet quite a few people I you know I'm I'm kind of shy I'm an introvert a major introvert um, and so it's really hard for me to get up and go like introduce myself and meet people that I don't know um, that's just hard for me um, and so I kind of just stayed back at my table and lots of people came up to me which was wonderful I loved that because that's like the perfect way for me to meet people so I don't have to get up and put myself out there um, but I did a little bit I got up and like when I would walk over to the annex which was next door and I'll talk about that a little bit or I was going to the bathroom or whatever and sometimes I'd you know walk by people and stop and say hi so I did get myself out there a little bit and I promise I'll do better next year <laughs> but it was just it was very overwhelming for someone like me who is um, sort of filled with anxiety in those kinds of situations but it was good um, and so I just I met so many wonderful people over the weekend I wrote a list here so that I, I wouldn't forget and I probably still have forgotten to include some people and so I am sorry if I forgot you you um I did meet Jen Lee quirks and stitches I was actually on my way trying to find the bathroom <laughs> and I ran into her and her mom out in the hallway and stopped to say hi and chat with them for just a quick minute um and so hopefully maybe next year I'll get to talk to her a little bit more so but it was just really quick um like I said I met Lynette from home setting on the home front I didn't get a chance to meet little one but I did see her running all over the place and she was just adorable and she was there um I think she was a crowd favorite um I saw Jan from Jan Hicks. Hi, Jan. We ran into each other while we were shopping in the annex and I got a big hug and we talked for a little while and she is just the nicest, sweetest person ever. And so I'm so glad that I got to run into you, Jan. It was wonderful. Um, same thing goes for Donna Ray from Flannel Jammies Farm. She stopped by our table and I got a hug from her too and we chatted for a little bit. And again, just the nicest nicest woman ever so that was wonderful i met mckenna from stitching and sequins she came by and was sharing some of her business cards and then i went over by her table and chatted with her for a minute and got a picture with her again sweet as can be um and just so much fun um kyle um kyle rickmeyer from stitching and sound he was on his um meet 399 operation meet 399 he was hoping to get to meet everyone at stitchcon i'm not sure he managed to do that um, but i did go over and chat with him for a little while and he is just the sweetest thing you guys i mean super super nice and just adorable so kyle if you're watching i'm so glad i got to meet you and i signed his book and he's the one that gave me the taco sticker so he had a, bo a book full of stickers um, so that when he met someone they got a sticker and stuck it on their their uh, name tag so that he knew that he had met them and talked to them um, and so I took the taco because who doesn't love tacos um, so but he was just so sweet and kind um, and who else um, I did meet EJ from the sunshine sunshine stitcher she stopped by our table at one point and we all chatted with her and she was just adorable um, I talked to Barb and Leanne from Lost and Floss. Hi Barb. Hi Leanne. They were so sweet. They We ran into each other in the annex. We bonded over floss, the color and cotton floss. <laughs> and then we chatted for quite a while on the last day of the retreat. And they are just a hoot and so fun. And I so enjoyed meeting you guys and chatting with you. I'm so glad that we got a chance to talk for a little while. Um, I met Valerie from Stitching in the Barn, um, lovely, and so that was wonderful. Um, Debbie Bernheisel from Snug Harbor Crafts, who is just a doll. Um, we chatted while we were at Keepsakes shopping. She's just the cutest thing. Um, I saw Candy from Candy Stitches. She was sitting at the next table over um, with all the Cincinnati gals, and so I got to talk to her a little bit. Uh, Melissa Cupcake Stitcher, she was there as well, and she gave me that very pretty needle minder. Um, Crystal and Lisa from Stitching the Dream were at next table over, and Crystal is just such a hoot. We went out to dinner one night with a couple of us, 
Um, and she's just hilarious. And I love her. She's so funny. Um, and then Delisha, of course, and then Sharon. Um, hi, Sharon. They, are, they were directly behind me at the next table over. And so we would lean over and chat every once in a while. And so they are just wonderful people. Um, Victoria from Victoria's Creative Crafts. I ran into her and we talked a little bit. And so that was nice. Um, and then there were some others that I had very nice conversations with. I met Sonia, who is a local Ohio stitcher. And I think she's convinced me to join her sampler guild up there. Um, we don't have anything like that down here in Tennessee, as far as I know. Um, and she talked to me about all the fun stuff they do up there. And so I'm pretty tempted <laughs> to join their guild, even if, if I'm only a remote member, but that's okay. And Sonia stitched all of the um, Blackbird anniversaries of the heart all on one giant piece of fabric. And it was to die for amazing. And I think I got a picture of it. And so I'll stick it at the end of the video when I put in all of my pictures that I'm going to show. Um, but it was lovely to chat with you, Sonia. Um, I also met Jennifer and Renee, another set of sisters. Um, and so we had a fun time chatting for, for quite a bit and they were so, so nice. And so I just love meeting you guys and I'm so happy I got to talk with you. And Renee gave me a bag of sawdust from her old uh, house that she's remodeling. And so I've never used sawdust to stuff anything, but I've got a bag of start, uh, sawdust from Renee's house that I, and it smells so good. Um, and so I'm going to try to use it to stuff my next pillow. I actually have a finish that I'm going to show here in a few minutes and I'm wondering if it might be enough to fish, uh, finish that pillow. So I'll show that in a few minutes. Um, who, oh gosh, I'm sure there were other people that I'm forgetting. Um, but I mean, there were so many other people there, floss tubers that I saw in the distance, but I didn't get a chance to meet or talk to. And plus just a million wonderful ladies. Oh, Debbie, who purchased some project bags for me ahead of StitchCon, and then I just brought them there and gave them to her. So hi, Debbie. Um, so that was nice. Um, gosh, who else? I can't even remember. There was just so many, so many people, and it was fantastic. Um, and it was so wonderful. People would come up to me and be like, I love watching your videos. And it just made me so happy. I was just, I'm so glad that there's, I'm not talking to nobody here. Um, but it's, it was just so much fun to see people who enjoy all this stuff. Um, and so it was, it was just amazing. Um, and sorry, I'm going to lean over and see if I can gra grab my Kleenex here. Um, so it was, it was fun. It was I mean, to be in a room with 400 like-minded people is just, um, it's amazing and crazy and wonderful. And so I, I mean, I had the best time, even though I was a little bit nervous going in. Um, it was so much fun. So, so, so much fun. Um, and so, oh, and of course, you know. Barb from Keepsakes, um, and Lenny, and Jen, Spoonaroonie Stitcher. We chatted and had a good time. I can't believe I forgot you. I didn't forget you. Just <laughs> She was wonderful, and she kept coming over and like checking on me and make sure I was okay. <laughs> she knew I was nervous coming in. Um, and so it was just wonderful. And obviously Pam and Steph were there, and they're fantastic and so I got a chance to catch up with them a little bit on the last day um, and so it was just it was wonderful um, so I actually did do some stitching I probably got a little bit more stitching done than maybe some other attendees because I actually sat at my table quite a bit and stitched while chatting with my table mates um, and so I did get, you know, a little bit done. I switched and stitched on lots of different projects. I was trying to finish up my June challenge for the 24 hours of cross stitch group. And so I needed to put my stitches in on, you know, a bunch of different projects to fill out my 24 hours. Um, and so I'll show those in just a minute. Um, but so the first day, Thursday, um, 
I'm trying to think of what was going on. So we were, we all kind of were hanging out and having fun Thursday evening. They did a little bit of a sort of a welcome session um, where they chatted um, to us for a little bit. And then there was a preview night for the annex. So the annex was the shopping room sort of next door to the stitching room. Um, and so keepsakes had brought in a bunch of stuff and then they had essentially some trunk shows from a bunch of different designers um, and had all of their things for sale. And it, oh man, they had so much good stuff in there. I did two separate shopping trips, <laughs> which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and so Thursday night was the preview. You could go in and look around, but you couldn't buy, um, which was okay. So I went in there and checked it out and I was like, oh yeah, I see some good stuff in here. The fabric, there was color and cotton and under the sea fabrics. And the fabric we knew, all knew was gonna be the popular thing. And so this, the annex opened Friday morning and I just wasn't even gonna go. Like I wasn't even gonna attempt it because I knew there would be just a crazy amount of people in there. And there was, it was crazy. The lines were long, um, which I don't think anybody minded. Everybody was happy to, to wait in line. Um, but I just knew I wasn't even gonna try. And I figured, you know what, maybe I'll save some money if everybody else buys everything before I get there. <laughs> There's less for me to spend my money on. So, um, and actually Friday morning I ended up, this is so stupid, but I broke like several of my nails like the first day or two. And it was just, they were snagging on everything and. It was just driving me insane. So Friday morning, I actually found like a nail place that was close by and ran over and got a manicure because I couldn't stand it. Like my nails like literally were broken. Like, cause I get the dip powder manicure um, on top of my real nails, but the powder coating had cracked and broken off and was like snagging on everything. And it was driving me insane. I knew I should have gotten a manicure before I left, but I just didn't have time. Um, so I actually went Friday morning and got a manicure, um, which was nice. And then, um, after that, then I went over to the convention center and came in and by then it was still, it was already insanity with the annex and all of those folks. Um, so I just decided to wait a little while and I went to keepsakes Friday sort of mid-afternoon. I hadn't been in there. I'd only been back in the stitching room for about an hour or so. And then they had the stitchy bus, which I took a picture of and I'll show at the end, um, that was making runs to keepsakes. So I said, you know what, this is a perfect time. I'll go to keepsakes. Um, and so I went to keepsakes on Friday, which was amazing. I mean, it's an amazing shop. It is so cute. And they have so much good stuff in there. Um, just every corner is packed with fantastic things um, and so in a minute when I show you all my haul whew, I will show you what I got at keepsakes um, so I was there for a while and then I left and came back and um, that was Friday and so I think at some point Friday afternoon I decided that I'd go do my shopping in the annex and so I went over there and I shopped around and there was still a ton of good fabric left um, and so I got quite a bit and some other things. Um, and so I'll show you those in a minute. <laughs> and then Friday night, um, some of the Cincinnati ladies invited me out to dinner. So that was wonderful. So we went out to dinner that night and then um, we came back and stitched again until, you know, the end of the day the stitching room was open until 10 p.m. every night um, and I pretty much packed it up and went back probably around 9 30 each night um, they also had a late night stitching room that was at the La Quinta which was you know a couple blocks away not too far but um, I was just too tired and kind of on people overload from all the you know days long of you know stitching and hanging out with everybody and so I never went over to the late night room I went ahead and just went back to my room decompressed took a shower and went to bed at a somewhat normal hour so that I could then get back up in the morning and go back over um, so that was Friday um, Saturday morning I got back over there a little bit earlier and then spent most of the day on and off stitching away um, made another visit to the annex bought more stuff 
<laughs> that I didn't get the first time around. Um, and then that night went out to dinner with some of my table mates to a little local Italian restaurant that was delicious. It was amazing, just down the street. Um, and then again, stitched until closing time. And then Saturday or Sunday morning, oh, and Saturday we did our smalls exchange. Um, my group did at least, and so I'll talk about that right now. Um, so with, you know, almost 400 people, it would have been very difficult to do the smalls exchange with everybody at the same time. So what they did was when you came in and registered, um, if you were going to participate in the smalls exchange, they had you reach into a bag and pull out a chip. And the chip was a color. They had red, green, blue, and white, and then it had a number written on it. And so the different colors, they had four different groups that went two on Friday, two on Saturday. Um, and so right before it was time for your color chips group to do the exchange, everybody went up and put their stuff on the table. Um, and then they called out the numbers in order. And then when your number was called, you walked up, handed off your chip, picked a bag from the table, and then that was how they did the exchange. Um, and then after each round was over with, they called everybody back up to the front so that you could find the person that had made your, your piece. And then um, everybody put their stuff back on the table on display for, for a little while until, you know, whenever the next exchange was. So my exchange, I was in the white chip exchange, which was on Sunday morning or Saturday morning, the third of four exchanges. And here's my bag that I received. And it is, um, I got this lovely card. Isn't that the cutest? I need to, oh, these are from Kitten Stitcher. I gotta get some of these cause they are beautiful. Um, so my, the person that stitched my smalls, her name was Sylvia Jorgensen from Catskill, New York. Um, and the pattern that she stitched is Stitching and Is My Heart's Desire by Hands On Design. And here it is. It was in this cute little like felt bag and here it is it's like a little pin pillow like a like a with a pocket and a pair of scissors with a scissor fob look at how beautiful this is this is so pretty and a pair of beautiful scissors with a scissor fob and stitchcon 2019 I, is that not, the, I, I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Sylvia, so much. It's beautiful. So beautiful. So I'm gonna put this on out here in my sewing room. I just, I love it. And some of the smalls that people made were just, I mean, the talent in this group of people is just amazing. I mean, I think mine was perfectly fine. And I, I have a picture I'll put at the end of me with the woman who received my small. And I think she liked it. Um, and I mean, mine, I thought I liked it a lot. I thought it was perfectly cute and lovely little pin pillow filled with walnut shells. Um, but so, I mean, some of these things that people made were just out of this world amazing. Like tiny little things stitched over one. And one um, person made this little, it was like the hit of the Smalls Exchange. And actually my table mate, Linda, received it in the exchange. And it was like a stitched little Campbell soup can that said like um, cream of ort, I think is what it said. And it was just, it was adorable. But I have to pause for a moment because that was my husband calling me. He's in California, they've been having earthquakes. So I'm gonna call him back and I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Um, that was my husband calling to tell me about everything uh, going on out there. They've had two big earthquakes in the last couple days. I'm sure you've heard about them. Um, and so every time we go to California, there's an earthquake. So we weren't there when our daughter was little, we were on a big trip and there was a big earthquake. Uh, it just seems like every time we go, there is an earthquake. So, um, so they felt it, rocking and rolling. Um, my son was with my mom in the jacuzzi of their pool in their backyard, and apparently the water was 
splashing down to the side of the pool and almost all the way to the back door of the house. Um, my daughter is in Las Vegas with my mother-in-law. They were at a show watching Marie Osmond and felt it in the theater. Um, and then my husband was with his friend, I think, out, um, they were out at a casino or something and felt it out there too. So this second one of the, of the two. So they were rocking and rolling, having lots of fun. That is one thing I do not miss at all about not living in California anymore. I mean, I grew up in California. I have felt hundreds, if not thousands of earthquakes in my life. I hate earthquakes so much. And so I would rather live out here with, you know, potential tornadoes and all of that way more than dealing with earthquakes. They suck. <laughs> so anyway, um, okay, back to stitching. So I was talking about the Smalls Exchange. That was wonderful. It was amazing to see everything that everybody received. That little Ort jar or Campbell soup was the hit of the day. And um, it's a free pattern that they've made available to us that we're at StitchCon, and so maybe I'll stitch one someday. Um, so what else? So there was also a freebie table at the in the stitching room, and there was tons and tons of stuff up there. Um, I went and looked at it probably on the first day or so. I probably should have gone back and looked again um, because people were finding all kinds of good stuff. But I did find some really good things the first day when I was up there. I found these three um, Prairie Schooler Santas that I didn't have. So 2010, 2009, and 2011. So it's pretty good. So I got those off the freebie table. Um, and okay, what else? Let me see, I'm looking at my list here to make sure. Um, I think that's probably it. Um, so I'll show you what I was working on. Um, but so the last day, um, a lot of people I think had to leave pretty early. So the stitching room was definitely emptier on Sunday. Um, but I got over there probably at about nine or so and hung out until about noon or 1230. And so I spent actually most of the last day kind of wandering around and talking to people and, um, you know, just chatting and saying goodbye to Pam and Steph. Um, and so I didn't really do much stitching on the last day. And then I headed out, it was probably about 1230 when I left. Um, and so I just grabbed some lunch and then ate in the car as I drove home. And I had to take a bit of a detour on the way home. There was an accident right outside of Knoxville. Um, so I took some nice uh, windy back roads for the last <laughs> hour or so. Um, and so I think I got home at about 545 or so that evening, which wasn't bad. So it gave me time to get everything unpacked and get ready for work the next day so but anyway so that was the weekend it was so wonderful um, and i did actually manage to do some stitching so let me show you the stitching that i did um so the first thing that i worked on was let me find it Sorry, I'm, I'm catching myself in the cord here. So, you guys, I am having difficulty finding stuff. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm probably shaking that thing all around. Okay, so the first thing I worked on was Scarlet House say on a, a Salem Hill Sampler. And I finished it. I finished this on Thursday afternoon. And when I finished it, I didn't realize there was a bell that you could ring to, for finishes. Um, and then everybody would clap every time somebody would ring the bell. And I don't, when I finished this, I don't remember having heard the bell at all before. So maybe I was the first one to finish something at StitchCon. I didn't ring the bell, so nobody knows, but that's okay. Anyways. Um, sorry, my needle is stuck in here. Let's pull this out. Okay, there we go. So here it is. Oh, can't see it. Let's do this. Isn't 
that cute? I love it. And this is stitched on 36 count chalkboard by X Jew Design. Yep, 36 count. And so I really love how this turned out. And so I need to finish it now. I think I'm going to try to FFO it this weekend. And this one is the one I might make into a pillow and I may try to stuff it with sawdust. So that was one of my whips at StitchCon. And when I started stitching it there, I only had like this little bottom, like a tiny little bit of the fence and then the, you know, cobblestone to finish. That was all that was left. So it wasn't that much. Okay. So in addition to that, I also worked on, these were a lot of things for my challenge for 24 hours of cross stitch. So this one I worked on was Cricut Collection Fresh Eggs. I haven't worked on this one in forever. And when I worked on it, I kind of saw why, because I made a bunch of mistakes when I was working on it before. And then when I worked on it again at StitchCon, I made a bunch more mistakes. So here we go. Um, and so I finished up the G, this little part of the G added in the little yellow which is like a little bit of straw that this chicken right here will be sitting on and this whole section here this part of the g is one stitch too far this way so this whole thing is going to end up being off by one stitch i don't care this whole e is like one stitch too long so this chicken's head's gonna have to fudge that a little bit i don't care i'm not ripping it out um I think the issue is this fabric. So I love this fabric. It's beautiful. It is a, let me see what count it is. I can figure it out. It's a 32 count. It's barn wood by Picture This Plus. And it's gorgeous. The color is lovely. I think it's perfect for this. It's hard, like the holes are super tight. And so it's hard to count. And I um, I think I just keep, you know, miscounting my stitches and messing myself up as I work on it. So, and I'm just stitching that in DMC. And I don't know. So it's gonna have all kinds of fudging, but I don't care, that's all right. Okay, next project I worked on, let's see, was, I gotta move these out of the way. Sorry guys. Um, I worked on, I think I worked on this, yeah I did. One Starry Christmas Eve. By With My Needle and Thread. And I didn't do a whole lot. I just added more to his of the red from his robe so I was probably like about here and so I just back and forth back and forth lots of red but I really love this it's pretty and it's looking really nice on this 36 count Aztec red linen by Weeks Dye Works and I've converted the flosses to my own originally charted in silk. I didn't want to do the silks, so I just picked out flosses from my stash that work. Um, I worked on this a little bit, just barely. I, well, did I? I don't actually don't remember if I worked on this at StitchCon or if I worked on it once I got home. Doesn't matter. Three Things Sampler by Moira, Moira Blackburn. And I just got a little bit more done on the letters. I stitched the S and the H. <laughs> oh, there's that. 
I really love this. It's pretty. So I got some done on that. Okay, what else did I work on? Um, I worked on this um, Plum Street Sampler Sirens Tart. did a little tiny bit. So from Stitch Mania, I had the tail done and then at Stitch Con, I put in a little bit of the like kelp, the vines. And that was it. I really love this though. It's so cute and it's tiny. I really just need to work on it and finish it. Oh, and in here were some cards that I received from folks and a stitch minder. And I cannot remember now who I got this from. Oh, I don't remember. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. I'm so sorry if you were the person that gave me that needle minder, I cannot remember. Um, I did not bring needle minders to exchange, but there were lots of folks that had tons of them and they were just giving them off to some of us. And so I so appreciate that. And I'm really, really sorry that I can't remember who it was that gave it to me. Um, I feel bad now. Okay. This next one I worked on is Spring Snow by Ink Circles. I didn't get a ton done, just a little bit. Oopsie. This behind it. Sorry guys, all my fabrics are wrinkled from, you know, I stitch in hand, so. I just got a little bit of that green down on the bottom. So. And that is on a 30 count Weeks Dye Works linen in colorway. Um, is it Dove? Let me see. Sorry, I can't remember. Yes, 30 count Dove by Weeks Dye Works. Okay, that's not it. <laughs> um, let's see, I worked on Okay, next one was Ink Circles Turkish Delight. finished the darker blue in this one motif. So I had this and then I had like, you know, part of this in the inner part and then I finished the rest of it and these little doodads there. It's so pretty, but I mean, think about it. This is just this, you know, part of this motif here. That's all I've gotten done. There's a lot to go. <laughs> And this is stitched in Belle Soie in colorwork Blue Heaven and Purple Paradise. And they're just gorgeous. Oh, and in here, I've got two beautiful needle minders from Sharon that was sitting behind me at the table. And she is a beautiful artist and she does a lot of hand painting um, and Look at these that she's she hand painted a leaf and a pumpkin. Aren't those so beautiful? How gorgeous. Thank you, Sharon. So I'm excited to have those. I need to set them with my other needle minders so they don't get lost. So there's that. 
told you I worked on a lot of things. Actually, was pretty productive while I was there. Okay, I think I only have two more. All right, so I worked on Matters Choice by Carriage House Sampling. And you know, if you recall, when you saw this last time, I am doing this on a dark fabric with a gold silk. And it is so beautiful. Oh. I'm stitching this on 36 count smudge by Seraphim Hand Dyed Fabrics by Lori. It is so gorgeous, I can't even handle it. And I'm using this limited edition Bell Swaw. I mean, come on. This fabric is ridiculous. It's so gorgeous. I mean, look at this, modeling. It's got like oranges in it, which is why I chose this you know, orangey gold floss. I love it. I love it. Okay. And my last whip of the weekend. And I've also been working on it this past week quite a bit since I got home. So there's a lot more progress on this than what I got done at StitchCon. I'm just checking my bag to see if I worked on it. I did not work on any of these other things. Okay. So this one, I'm obsessed with this project, you guys. It is so pretty. Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. This is, um, this was one of my 24 hours of cross stitch challenge pieces, but it's also one of my stitch nine challenge. So I'm hoping to finish it this year. And I really do think I will, because actually if I were to just concentrate on this, like this weekend, today's Saturday, it's midday. I could probably finish it by tomorrow night. Now I've got a bunch of other things I'm doing at the moment, so I don't know that that's actually gonna happen, but I do think I will have this finished very soon. Look at that. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I'm obsessed with this. So I've got all the words done. I've got that inner border done. I need to do the outer border. And I've got like a couple more of these little motifs that I need to finish up. So there's another color I need to add here, another color here. There might be one or two more of these little star like plus things. And then I gotta see these little edges. I need to add those on this side. Um, but other than that, it is just the border that needs to be done. And I think I could knock that out pretty quickly. Oh my gosh, you guys. I love this so much. This is on 32 count dirty linen. And I'm obsessed. I am obsessed. I'm using some subbed out flosses. It's not the call for colors. Um, the gray in the bird's wings and here and in the letters, that is the called for garden gate. But the other darker in some of the letters and the birds I'm using Weeks Dye Works Coal, and it calls for Gentle Arts Onyx, which I think is a slightly lighter. It's closer in color to this. So there's a little bit more contrast between my two colors than what the pattern calls for, but I like it. I think it looks pretty. And so I am just so happy with how this is turning out. I'm sorry it's so wrinkled. I should have ironed it first, but I just love it. Love it. So. I think I need to work on that some more this weekend because I want it to be finished so I can frame it and put it on the wall. And um, Delisha was working on another, a very similar pattern. It's also by Blackbird. It's in the sisters book and it's called, I think, At First Cox Crow. Um, and it's very similar to this. Um, with some crows and it uses almost all the same colors. It almost looks like it was meant to be a companion piece to this. And so I'm gonna go buy that and I'm gonna stitch it in the same floss as I used for this piece on the same linen um, so that I can have the two side by side. 
but I'm just, this might be one of my most favorite things I've ever stitched because it, I just love it that much. Okay, so I think that is it. Um, so before I move on to my haul, I'm to I told you this is gonna be a long video. I wanna share with you a few things um, that I received from some very kind people. I got this Quilter's Cottage from Delisha. She won um, one of the raffle prizes and it was a bag, a cross stitch bag from the Fat Quarter Shop filled with patterns. And she handed me the stack and said, you know, I can never stitch all these, take one. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> and she was like, yep, go ahead. And so this is the one I picked because of course, Quilter's Cottage. I love this. And I'm thinking maybe I'll stitch this for the whistle stop and I'll like dull down the colors, make it look more vintagey. But I mean, come on. Pretty. Okay, and oh, I'll also show you. Here's my bag of sawdust from Renee. I'm excited to use it. So cool. And what else? Oh, so Linda that was at our table, she made these for everybody. Look at how cute this is. It was to keep your earbuds in it. And so it's a little pouch with a pom-pom. Um, it looks like a little baby um, mitt and you can keep your earbuds in it. Isn't that cute? She gave one to everybody at our table. Isn't that sweet? And then from her sister Rose, she made um, she made uh, bags for everybody. I mean, isn't that wonderful? I'm telling you, people are so sweet. So look at the cute bag that I got. Sorry, I bent up the corner. It's got the cutest little mushroom fabric on the back. I just love it. So thank you, Rose. So I got to find a project to put in here. We've got plenty of them for sure um okay and let me see is there anything else that I'm forgetting um I don't think so I think that's it Whew. like that wasn't enough right um okay yes I'm drinking Mountain Dew I went to Taco Bell for lunch like the grown-up that I am. <laughs> and I got diet Mountain Dew. So, okay. Um, next. So now it's time to show you all of my haul. You guys. It's gonna, it's gonna take a while. I may have gone a little crazy. Well, you know how I am. I am... Uh unable to control myself when it comes to buying things. Ew. But we know this, right? And then when we're done, I have a few other things to show you that I got elsewhere. So, all right. So first I'm gonna try to keep these sort of in order. So first I'm gonna show you, I want to keep things. My bag of goodies from Keepsakes. So I'm gonna show you I got. Okay, so I uh, got a couple of flosses. A couple of these are for one of the charts I bought, and the two Bell Swa are for the Sarah Redfern chat chart that I bought a while back, and I got some of the flosses and not all of them, so I've been slowly trying to find them when I can. And since we got 15% off keepsakes when we were wearing our badge, I went ahead and took advantage. So I got those flosses, just a couple. I got some fabric. This is a fat eighth of Old Town, 36 count Old Town blend. They had lots of like of fabric and different scraps and things. This is a fat quarter of 35 count Weeks Dye Works linen in Grasshopper. Look at how pretty that is. 
I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but I had to have it because it was beautiful. I love greens. You'll see, I bought a lot of green fabric. Uh, this is a small, like a remnant piece of 36 count Nantucket brew. Just a little remnant. You can find something for that. And then another remnant piece, 32 count. Picture this plus in swamp, which is a dark green. And it's an odd remnant piece, kind of long and narrow. Maybe I can do something Christmassy on this with the green. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. And so, okay, then I got some charts. They had a bunch of freebie charts, which was awesome. Um, so these are all the freebie charts that they had out, or they, the ones they had out that I liked. So, a bunch of those. And then here's the things that I bought. Most of these, not all of them, but a lot of these I bought because I saw a model stitched and I was just, you know, I loved it. So these first two, they had a bunch of these little like stitched quilt blocks on the wall going up the staircase and I just loved them. So I got these two. And then this is a Blackbird Designs Sweet Thoughts of You. And they show it stitched on, you know, perforated paper, but I'm not gonna do that. I'll just stitch it on fabric. Um, it's cute, just a little tiny, small. It'd be good for an exchange or something. Um, this one is by Milady's Needle, the Cottage Charm Stitcher's Pocket. And I just thought it was so pretty. Stitched in just a variegated floss. It just looks like it's nice and it's a little, you know, a little thing you can stitch. I just thought it was pretty. This one they had hanging up on the wall and it was beautiful in person and that's what convinced me to buy it. Um, Heartstring Samplery, love makes everything better. This one they also had um, a model stitched up that it's the bottom picture here on the cover. Star the Scarlet House Coverlet Houses. So see the bottom one that's the pillow? They had that stitched like that on a shelf and it was so pretty in person. So I had to get it. So that's the one I would stitch, not, not this one. Um, a Blackbird. Um, blackbird. <laughs> I don't think I have this one yet. I don't think I do, but I love it. Okay, and then this is one that I've seen many times, but they had it there finished and with the little hat and everything, and it was so cute, I could not pass it up. Hats off to Uncle Sam by Blackbird Designs. And so they had the little, you know, hat with everything. So cute. This would be perfect in the Old Glory bedroom at the farmhouse. And so I may just have to make it for that. I need to, I gotta find the hat and all that good stuff. <laughs> and then this one, which I don't think I ever would have normally been, you know, attracted to this, but they had one stitched up and made sitting there on the shelf and it was so pretty. Um, and so this is Mrs. Waddlow's Huswife by With My Needle. And so it's like a little needle roll, Huswife. And they had it stitched up exactly like this and it was so gorgeous. And I, with the binding around the outside and I'm like, I can make that, I can totally make that. So I had to get it. So that my friends is my, my keepsakes haul. So, okay, one down, two to go, okay, so next, the annex, <sighs> so many beautiful things in there. This is 
bag number one. I went twice. This is my first trip. Okay. So as I told you, the fabric was kind of the star of the show. All right. So there was a color and cotton and under the sea fabrics. And so I got these from color and cotton. This is a 36 count uh, stitch con limited edition. So there's no color name, but it's like a pinky mauve kind of color. This one is also a stitch con limited edition 36 count. It's like a gray, almost a bluish, a bluish gray. Another Stitch Con Limited Edition, 36 count, like a peachy pink. <sighs> Another Stitch Con Limited Edition, 36 count. This is kind of like, almost like a sand color. I think it would be good for a sampler. And this is the one that I saw the first night and I wanted to, I was hoping they would have some left when I went in to shop the next day and they did, they had one piece left. And it's 40 count and it's dried sage is the color and it's just so pretty and I actually have a project in mind for this already which I'll show you in just a minute so those are my stitch our color and cotton fabrics and then the other ones were under the sea Leslie LaFleur and so those ones were like, there was not a lot left by the time I got in there, but I still managed to find a few good things. So this is a 40 count linen, Christmas in Williamsburg. Look at how pretty that is. I'm not sure what I'll use it for yet, but it was too pretty to pass up. Next is 32 count Jobelin in Sea Witch. And I think I have an idea for what to use this for as well. I'll show it to you in a minute. This is a 36 count linen in evergreen, which is like a deep, dark teal blue with like greenish modeling. Super pretty. And then last but not least is a 32 count opalescent linen and the color is hurricane and i bought this for my mirabilia snow queen it's a giant piece but i think this will be perfect for that pattern which i actually have sitting right down here that. I think that'll be perfect, don't you think? Look at how pretty that is. So I'm super excited about that. I don't know when I'll ever get stitching on that because it's a huge project and it's not like I don't have time for it right now, but whatever. Okay, so that was the fabric. Um, they also had a ton of color and cotton flosses and in my first go around I just bought one this is mistletoe which is a color that I'm using for the vines on that three things sampler and I was worrying that I might run out and it was a color that I think that came in the Christmas box and I was worried that I wouldn't have enough well she had it there and so I got myself another skein of it so in case I run out they had these little horn books like with a needle you know thread holders and it was just too cute I want to I don't know what I'll make but something tiny to mount on here a stitch con needle minder magnet um, they had a couple of freebie patterns so I got some of those this one is so cute Jenny beans pin tuffet 
by Shakespeare's Peddler. They had a, a whole bunch of Shakespeare's Peddler um, things on display and they were just so beautiful. I was so tempted by some of the big samplers, but I just can't do any more right now. I, I probably will eventually break down and get them. A Savior's Praise is gorgeous. I'm not religious though, so I keep waffling about it, but it's just too pretty like not to stitch. So I'm probably gonna have to get it at some point. Um, there's the Mercy Goodheart one as well. I mean, they were just so pretty. Um, anyways, okay, they also had a bunch of Jeanette Douglas there, like, on display, and there were lots of patterns that I have seen and waffled over, and this time seeing the model stitched in person is what pushed me over the edge. So there were two that I got, the Star Center quilt, which obviously, duh, right, um, quilts and me go together, but they had this one there in person, and it's so beautiful stitched up. Now I might actually want to change the colors a little, but it's, I mean, it's just gorgeous. So I got that. And then this is another one that the model sold it. It was vintage birds. I don't even like birds people, but this was so beautiful stitched up that I just couldn't resist it. And I should have gotten some of the other ones. They had the vintage stars and vintage flowers too. But this one is, this peacock with all the specialty stitches is just gorgeous in person. So I had to get that. And then I got this one, which is the one that I'm thinking of using the um, dried sage fabric for from Color and Cotton. Um, is the Death of Susanna Jane by Works by ABC. I love this. And so I kind of want to stitch it on that. What do you think? Think that'll look good? This, I'm not sure how this is coming across color wise. When I'm seeing myself on the iPad, it looks very green and it's not as green as that. It's much more muted, like, um, like a dull olive green with kind of gold flecks in it. And so I think it would look nice with this. So that was my haul from my first trip to the annex, where I did a lot of fabric damage. <laughs> but it was just so much good stuff, you guys. Okay, so then the next day I went back because I was like, I'm just gonna go see. I'm gonna. I had felt a little bit rushed the first time around. I don't know why, sort of self-imposed, but um, I was like, I'm gonna go back and look again. And I wanted to look at the thread, you know, the floss again. <sighs> so I did. And so here's my bag. This second go around. Oh boy. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep things somewhat organized here, you guys. This is hard. All right, so one of the things that I saw the first time around and I just didn't have a chance to look at it up close, um, there was a ton of stuff and sometimes you had to kind of dig through it, um, but they had these little um, chalk squared. They had them finished and in the little pan and they were so, so cute. And so when I went back the second day, there weren't, weren't many people in there. And so I was able to take my time and look through and I was able to find, they had four of the patterns. So April, May, June, July. So I was able to get all four of those and they had the button packs for all four. So I was able to get those two for these. And I bought one of the pans. So I figured I just bought one and I'll swap them out. Like I'll put a magnet and then I'll just swap them. Since they're monthly, you really only need one at a, at a time. So I just bought one plate and I'll swap them. Okay, so those were just so cute. So I was glad I was able to go back in and find some. And now I gotta figure out where to get the rest of the months. 
Um, okay. Let's see. And then I got Jenny Bean's Halloween Sampler by Shakespeare's Peddler, which again was on display and was so pretty, so I couldn't pass it up. And then I got this, which again, they, this is Dark Shadows by Sue Hillis. And they had um, like this black, like gothic candelabra, like pretty tall, like two feet tall. And then each one of these little things was sitting on one of the spots where the candle would be. And oh my gosh, it was so, so cute. Like, I want to find that candelabra so I can make one in the same way. But this is where I think that purple fabric that I got from Under the Sea, I think would be perfect for these. So that's my plan with the purple. So cute, you guys. I mean, it's so much prettier in person. I love it. Okay. And then. I went a little crazy with the floss. I already have a lot of color and cotton floss and I was kind of, I couldn't, I may even already have some of these colors, but I don't know. I just picked what I liked. And so I ended up, I'm not gonna go through like every single one. I'll just hold them up and you can see, you know, some of the colors that I got. Her floss is so beautiful. It's shiny and pretty. I think her colors are amazing. Like, I just think her, she has the best color sense. And her colors are just different than what you see from some of the other um, dyers. And they're just, I mean, she just, the depth of color and the variegation is so nice. I think, um, I mean, I love variegated floss. I don't want it to be really harshly variegated. I also don't necessarily want it to be like a semi-solid. So these ones I think are just have the perfect amount of variegation in them. And so I went a little crazy. And I think I bought 26 skeins of floss. <laughs> Whatever. You only live once. So, and I really am enjoying like when I kit up projects, converting them and using color and cotton. So, because they're just so pretty. So, lots of beautiful flosses to use in future projects. So that's that. That was my second trip to the annex. I think I've spent the rest of my year's budget. So I really shouldn't do any more shopping anytime soon. We'll see whether that holds or not. But um, I do have a few other things that I want to show you. So right before I went to StitchCon, I made my very first order from Threads Entwined. I've been hearing so many good things about the new shop that she has, so I wanted to try it out. Um, and she had a couple of things that I was looking for. So I got the next three Scary Apothecary charts from her. Um, there's all three in here, I just don't wanna take them out. I got this new Lindy Stitches chart, which is fantastic. A stitch for sweet freedom. Um, I've been looking for these two salt box um, patterns from Plum Street. Summer salt boxes and spring salt boxes. I have autumn. I'm hoping they come out with the winter. 
And then the last one is, this is amazing, you guys. The Blue Flower Summer Quilts. Again, the quilts. I mean, look at how cute that is. That is so pretty. So pretty. Love it. So I need to stitch this for the farmhouse again. And then she threw in a skein of floss. Caterpillar, which is a great color that I use a lot. So awesome. So that was my very first order from Threads and Twine, and I'm sure I will be ordering from them again. Um, last thing, I promise. I got my Color and Cotton uh, limited edition 4th of July box. So, so I'm going to share with you what came inside. It's the Stars and Stripes mystery box is what it was called. So, there is a needle minder, specially made for us by Mad for Minders, featuring, featuring our favorite American seamstress. I think it's Betsy Ross. Uh, vintage hand-dyed silk ribbon for embellishing an ornament. Navy Kona quilting cotton to back fi small finishes, drums, and more. Six-ply stranded silk. Tiny red snips from Paula Sibold of Kelmscott Designs. Stranded cotton threads in an Americana palette and stitching linen, which makes us think of old parchment. Yay. So here is the needle minder. Look at how pretty that is. It's cool. And these are the cotton flosses. Look at those pretty colors. And I dying you guys these are so cute look at these little red scissors I love them so much some beautiful silk ribbon look at that how pretty is that some, some silk called spacious skies this like hand dyed navy Kona cotton super pretty and this beautiful fabric it's called 1776 36 count that's beautiful I wonder that's actually pretty similar to that other one that I got which is good because that's a perfect color that you can use for like anything. So I, this is fantastic. I really super love these limited edition boxes that she does. Um, they're just gorgeous and come with the best. And you know, I, mean, I love her floss and fabrics. So as long as I can continue to get, snatch up one of these, I'm going to keep getting them because they're just, they're great. All right, I think that's everything. Thank you. If you've made it this far, thank you for waiting and patiently watching. I appreciate it. Um, at this point, I am going to insert uh, a bunch of my photos from StitchCon. I didn't take nearly as many as I would have liked to, but um, I did try to take some. And so I'm going to go ahead and stick those in at the end here. So I hope you enjoy those. But Thank you so much for stopping by and for watching. Um, if you would like to follow me on Instagram, my handle is down below in the description box. Um, if you're interested in following the Whistle Stop or coming to visit us, our information is all down below as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for stopping by. If you are even thinking about going to StitchCon, please, you should go. It was absolutely amazing and totally worth it. It was one of the most wonderful things I've ever done in my life. So please just give it a shot. Um, if I don't know if the wait list is open or not right now, but if it's not, whenever it does come open again, put your name on it. Um, it's just 
it's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, and I'm definitely planning to go next year um, because it was just one of the best things ever. So thank you again for stopping by and listening to me ramble for probably an hour and a half now. Um, I really appreciate it and I will see you next time. Bye.